Hi, this is Harry Guinness for Tuts Plus. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to set up password protected vaults on your Mac. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you three different methods for doing it. Making your own using your Mac's built-in disk utility, using the open source software TrueCrypt, and using Knox. To start with, I'm just going to show you how to create a vault using disk utility. To begin, open disk utility, then click on the new image button there. We're going to create a sparse disk image. A regular disk image takes up as much space as you set at the start, whereas a sparse disk image only takes up as much space as the contents. So we're going to name it whatever we want to save it as. We'll save it as Vault. We'll save it to the desktop. We're going to give it a name as well that matches. The name is what it's called when it's mounted, and the save as is what it's called when it's not mounted and uh, we're going to yeah 100 megabytes should be fine mac os extended is perfect encryption that's the whole point of this 128 bit aes is fine uh, 256 you can do if you want it's more secure but slower as it says there uh, partition map we don't need to worry about and we want to use a sparse disk image to create it just click create it will do its thing, pop up, and ask you to enter a password. We're just going to do something simple like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In reality, if I was going to use this vault, I would give it a better password than that. Uh, remember, password in my keychain, you do not want to check. If you do, anyone will be able to mount the disk at will. So uncheck that and click OK. That will finish creating that. We can see it loads up there we've now got a password protected vault with a maximum size of 100 megabytes you can see it's there if I close out of that and look at finder here we can unmount it by clicking the eject there and then if we double click on vaults.sparse image we'll get a pop-up asking for the password one two three four five six press enter and it mounts up Next up, I'm going to show you how to do it using TrueCrypt. Open up TrueCrypt, which you can get from the website, and click on Create Volume. TrueCrypt offers a whole range of options that we're not going to touch on in this tutorial. If you are James Bond, you can explore these other options. If not, you really don't need the extra levels of security that TrueCrypt offers. In the first menu, click on Create an Encrypted File Container and hit Next. We're going to create a standard TrueCrypt volume rather than the hidden TrueCrypt volume. So click Next again. You can select a file that already exists or create a file. If you select the file that already exists, you can camouflage it quite easily as a JPEG or a movie file. Uh, just click Select File and then to the desktop, I'm going to save it as selfie.jpg. Click Save and that will load in there and then click next AES is fine as with disk utility beforehand you know, there's lots of different options and you can even layer different encryptions on top of each other but just leaving it at AES unless you have a reason not to then click next under volume size you set the actual volume size unlike with disk utility the TrueCrypt volume is always filled with random data so set whatever size you want here if you set it to be 3.4 gigabytes, in my case, it will take up the empty space on the hard drive. If you need a bigger vault, you can always come back and make another bigger one and move your files across. So I'm just going to do 100 megabytes as before. Hit next, create a password. We're going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 again, just to keep it simple. Key files are another one of those extra security features that I mentioned that we won't be covering. If you want to explore into them, you can read all the information there. But for most people, it's far more security than you need. Click Next to continue. You'll get a warning if you're using short passwords. They want you to be using passwords that are at least 20 characters long. But unless you're protecting state secrets, 12, 10 is probably fine. Click Yes to accept that. FAT as a file system allows you to move your faults between computers on different operating systems. Mac OS Extended limits it just to Macs. I'm going to run with Mac OS Extended. I'm not going to be using this on any other computers. Click Next. Uh, Cross-platform support. I will mount the volume only on Mac OS X. 
click next. Now you need to generate a random encryption key. Computers are poor at generating random numbers. So to make it so that the number can't be easily replicated, you move your mouse around in a random manner. And TrueCrypt uses an algorithm to create a pseudorandom random uh, number to pull the header key and master key from, which you can see there. All right, once you've moved your mouse around randomly, click Format. That will then go about its business, creating the vault. And once this is done, the TrueCrypt volume has been successfully created. Click OK. If you want to create another volume, click Next. Otherwise, click Exit. You see we've got selfie.jpg sitting on the desktop there. If I double click to open it, it's going to say the file selfie.jpg could not be opened. It's not recognized, it shows as a corrupt file to preview, but it looks to most humans as if it's just a regular JPEG file. To mount it so we can use it as a volume in TrueCrypt, we click select file, navigate to the file selfie.jpg, click open, click mount. It will then try to mount it. You gotta enter your password one, two, three, four, five, six, click OK. And that will mount up there. If we open up Finder, we can see the untitled is uh, the one we've got here. That's the selfie.jpg one. It is there, and we can drag and drop any files we want to keep secure into there. And finally, we're gonna use Nox. Nox is quite similar to how the Vaults are created using Disk Utility, except it provides you with a graphical managing system for it. You can see we've got the Nox menu bar app installed here. We click on that. I've got two vaults already set up. If I wanted to mount one of them, I could just click on it, but we're going to create a new vault first. So click New Vault. I'm going to name it, uh, we'll name it Tuts 2, second Tuts Vault. Set a password, one, two, three. Uh, four, five, six. Don't use that as your password. Way too many people do, and it's really not very secure. Uh, don't store it in your keychain either. I may have mistyped that, so we'll just do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, perfect. Uh, you can twirl open show advanced options to change the location by default. It's in a Knox file in your documents folder. You can change what size it grows up to, as with other sparse images, and you can change the level of encryption. We're going to leave it at 128 bit. Click Create, and it will go about doing its thing. Just leave that run. If you're creating larger images, it does take longer, but just for 100 megabytes, it shouldn't take more than a few seconds. There we go. To mount it, then, you can click on that, and we can see it's already mounted. If I click on Tuts Plus, will get the password pop-up. I have to remember my password. I uh, think that's it. Perfect. That will open up. So we up, go to Finder. We will see that we've got some vaults mounted. We have Tuts 2 and Tuts Plus. And they've got the little check marks beside them there. Accounts is another vault we could mount if we wanted to. Knox is great when you're managing lots of files that you want to keep secure, but you don't need to keep super hidden like you would with TrueCrypt. If you want more information on setting them up and using them, I suggest you read the rest of the tutorial below. I've been Harry Guinness, and this has been for Tuts Plus.